Welcome to the video for Theorems 2, Day 1 and Day 2. In this video, we're going to brush up on our Intermediate Value Theorem and expose ourselves to the Rolls Theorem, which is a precursor to the Mean Value Theorem. All right, let's get to it. All right, we've been exposed to the Intermediate Value Theorem earlier in the year, and as a reminder, this is a existence theorem. It says that if a function is continuous between A and B, then there exists a C, that is in between A and B, such that F of C is going to be to be between F of A and F of B. Uh, so let's uh, refresh our brain with this example here and use that. And I'm going to change some of this text here. Uh, explain why there must be a time where the particle I want to change this to is at rest because it's obvious that um, if this is the velocity we have negative velocity and positive velocity and then it's obvious that the particle was at one time moving in a negative direction and then at another time moving in a positive direction but we want to prove it's at rest so the way we go about doing that is we notice that there is a sign change between time 2 and 5. And I'm going to zoom in on here to make more room for writing. And we write, since our velocity function is a continuous function, since it is a continuous function, and v of 2 is less than 0, which is less than v of 5. There's a sign change there, so we can say there exists a c in the interval 2 to 5 such that v of c is equal to 0. And remember, this v of c equal to 0 is what's being pinned. It's the value of interest. So it's a pretty standard uh, four-part thing. We identify the conditions that uh, must be met for the IVT to be used. Then we cite the specific example that we're ex examining and then we draw our conclusion. So I'm going to let you uh, do that a little bit on problem two. I'm going to get it started for you, and then I'll pause the video. We want to prove that a solution exists to the given equation on the interval 1 to 3. And let's just go ahead and state that f of x is equal to 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus x. And we can use that to uh, prove that somewhere that function is equal to 2 on the interval of 1, 3. So go ahead and pause here, and uh, then we'll check back. Here's a hint. You might want to check the values of the endpoints of this function. All right, here's our four-part structure. Because the function is continuous, we can use the IVT. And because the left endpoint is less than our value of interest, which is less than our right endpoint. Then we can say there exists a c in the interval of 1 to 3, such that f of c equals our value of interest. All right, since this is a short video, I'm going to go ahead and roll on to uh, theorems to day 2, which is the Rolls theorem. Okay, Rolle's theorem is also an existence theorem. It tells us that something exists. However, in this case, we take it a bit further, and oftentimes we actually try to find that value of c. 
So first we say that it exists, and then we use our algebraic skills and our calculus skills to find it. And what Rolle's theorem says is the conditions are if the function is continuous on a closed interval, and it is differentiable on the open interval, and the left side is equal to the right side, then there exists a number such that the derivative is equal to zero. And we've got some sketches down here. We've got four functions. They are all uh, continuous curves. And we've got a condition where f of a is equal to f of b. f of a is equal to f of b on all three of them. And so the concluding statement is there exists a number where the derivative is equal to zero. And in our first case, it looks like any number between a and b would work because our slope is zero. On our second case, that occurs at the maximum. And the third case, it's going to occur at a local minimum. And in the fourth case, we see that it's possible for there to be even more than one number. So the Rolle's theorem proves that there exists a number, but it doesn't tell us how many numbers actually exist. And that usually comes out of doing the algebra after the calculus. So let's try this example three. Determine if Rolle's theorem applies. So first off, is f of x continuous on the closed interval? f of x is continuous on the closed interval because it's a polynomial and polynomials are continuous on their entire intervals or always and f of x is also differentiable because all polynomials are differentiable and we do differentiability on the open interval so the conditions are met we need to check one more condition does f of negative 2 equal f of 2? And if we plug negative 2 into the function, we get an answer of 8. And if we plug 2 into the function, we also get an answer of 8. So the three conditions are met. So we can draw our concluding statement, which is there exists... a c in negative 2, 2 such that f prime of c is equal to 0. So somewhere between negative 2 and 2 this curve has a flat spot. So that's what Rolle's theorem is proving. It's telling us that the curve has indeed a flat spot and we use that flat spot then to determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum. So let's go ahead and do the second part of the problem that says if it does apply, find the value or values. So let's uh, move down the page. First thing we need to do is find the derivative. f prime of x is equal to 4x to the third minus 4x and we want to set that derivative equal to 0. So I did it here and uh, factored out the 4 and we were able to factor out an x and we find that there are three values so c can equal 0 or plus or minus 1 and all three of them are in the provided interval. So if one of them was outside of the interval, we'd exclude it. But since all three are in our interval, we can include all of them. Which means there are probably, or possibly, three flat spots on that curve. Which jives with our understanding of fourth degree polynomials, which tend to look something like that and it's probably probable that we have a flat spot at 0, negative 1, and positive 1. So we're going to get into it in the 
in the coming days how to be more specific and see exactly what's going on. But for now, we're just proving that it exists, and then we are finding it. All right, that concludes the video for Theorems 2, Day 1 and 2. Uh, I know there wasn't a lot of examples. IVT we had been exposed to before, and the Rolls Theorem is a pretty pretty straightforward theorem that I think is best practiced in homework problems since all of them are more or less structured the same way. So thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good day.